but it's still exciting to me to see people join the club and uh, talk about what their aspirations are and then watch them fulfill them, watch them grow, watch them try things. Welcome to District 30 Toastmasters Member Spotlight. Every month, we invite Spotlight one of our fellow members from the district. All of them are from different backgrounds with different professional levels in public speaking, presentation, and leadership. What they all share in common is they learned a lot from Toastmasters and they have a lot of stories to share about Toastmasters. Today, I have invited our fellow member, Neng Hesney, who has been with Toastmasters for over 11 years. And you will see, he has a lot of life experience and Toastmasters stories to share with us with his rich, background. So welcome, Nan. Good evening, yeah, Mufang. How are you this evening? I'm fine. Thank you. Welcome Good. to this uh, member spotlight. So great to finally meet you. I, I appreciate the invitation. Thank you. As we started the interview, I often ask the members, what brought you to Toastmasters? As many young people, they would like to improve their public speaking or later work into find the jobs to develop their career goals. But uh, look at you, you are successful and retired. What brought you to Toastmasters? Well, 11 years ago, I had aspirations to be go into public speaking, possibly as a full-time uh, second career. And uh, that's what initially brought me to Toastmasters. I'd heard about the opportunity to practice uh, public speaking and presentation skills, and that's what attracted me. So I actually visited three clubs okay. uh, because that's uh, what Toastmasters uh, professes is the, the way to do it. And yeah. uh, so I visited three clubs and I found the Woodridge Club 983 okay. to be the, the best for me in the way of personality and, and uh, um, operation. I loved that, the opportunity too, like you can visit as many clubs as possible before you decide to go with which club. And every club, even though runs in the same way, it has different atmospheres, uh, different culture. I describe it as they each have their own personality. Yeah, personality. Yeah, that's yeah. the great yeah. one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what did you find the most helpful after you joined Toastmasters? Once I got in there and, and saw the operation and saw the type of uh, environment it is, and it, it was described to me by some of the veterans as being the a laboratory, the place to experiment, the place you could try new things. And that was exciting because in, in business, uh, my uh, background is business management and okay. most of it was in manufacturing. When you're in front of people, you, you don't want to experiment and try new gadgets, uh, but Toastmasters was the place to try that. So I found that tremendously exciting. Uh, one uh, speech I gave, I, I actually changed my costume in the course of the speech. Uh -huh. I started out, I walked on stage in a, a motorcycle biker outfit and changed uh, my costume to the point where I ended up in a dress hat, a shirt and tie, and a sport coat. And I, so my, you, I changed the whole personality through the course of the speech. Wow. Another speech, I experimented with silent letters. Uh, my point was I was trying to emphasize how there are people going unrecognized in our society for doing great things. Mm -hmm. And I used silent letters as a gadget 
to uh, emphasize the point. And so for three sentences in my speech, I emphasized and articulated and, and spoke the, pronounced the silent letters. And it, it was a gag and it got a laugh, but it made an impression. And so these are things you can't uh, experiment with in business. You have to have that in your pocket before you uh, present. And uh, so that, that's what really was uh, fun to find in Toastmasters. Yeah, that's a really different perspective. You actually saw Toastmasters. It's as an experimental environment and uh, cultivate your creativity and the humor and the presentation skills, obviously. That's really amazing. Yeah, I, I find it very exciting. And, and uh, once again, I found a good club that encouraged that and, and, and just uh, expressed appreciation for it. So. Oh, yes, yes. We encourage all walks of life come to the same place because we respect everyone has different stories, different opinions to share. That's the great place. You don't have to argue. You can <laughs> give a good speech and the people give a very constructive feedback instead yes. of yes. having a heated argument. <laughs> Absolutely. In your even 11 years, have you served any leadership roles at Toastmasters? Yes, yes, I've, I've tried many of the roles. I've been president, I've been, I'm currently treasurer. Uh, I've, I've tried various roles. And uh, that has also translated into my personal life. Uh, my wife and I were both uh, always active in our church. And okay. uh, I got used to the leadership roles in Toastmasters and Maybe it encouraged me a bit to expand that uh, at our church. I've uh, been in a, num a number of leadership roles there, uh, most prominently for the last six, eight, ten years, maybe. I've been in charge of building grounds. So I'm a, a kind of a handyman guy. And uh, so I've been very active in our building projects or, or uh, maintenance projects at our, our church. And so it's, it's translated and I think it has had an, a positive effect on my personal life in that respect. You mentioned that you used to be in business management and also you ran your own business. Did you find yes. that there's a different way leading at a workplace or in Toastmasters? I think there's, at least in my experience, there, there's a common denominator in, in leadership, and that is that uh, it's how you value and how you work with people that you're trying to lead. If you take the posture that management is you give orders and people have to obey, uh, that, that only lasts for a very short time, and it's, it's never very effective, and it usually ends up in conflict. But if you are willing to get out there and try to understand what it is that uh, people you're trying to lead have to put up with, or have to deal with in their daily work, in their daily lives, then you know you can be much more effective. And uh, you know, in, in owning my own business, I uh, I had uh, uh, very few rules, but we all understood each other. We all understood the, the first business was to satisfy our customers. Yeah. And then uh, we did it with the accommodation of our personal lives. Everybody's got a family. Everybody's got something at home they're thinking about when they, even when they come to work. So, uh, you know, you have to understand that. You have to work with that. And in Toastmasters, everybody's there for a different reason. Mm -hmm. It could be career related. It could be self-improvement related. It yeah. could be a, a number of things. 
And the only way you get to know that is to ask. And, and hopefully, you know, the, the club or the Toastmaster program will help uh, enrich that or give them a path to, uh, you know, explore that and improve. Uh, we're all, it's a self-improvement program. That's what it's all about. And so like any self-improvement program, you get out what you put in. And uh, the club atmosphere is what will allow someone to explore what they need and get out what they need. If the club is very uh, regimented, if uh, you have to have a, a suit and a tie on every time you walk in the room, I, you know, that's not for everybody. Yeah. That may be for some people, but that's not what everybody's looking for. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the club atmosphere, that club personality is very important. Yeah, I agree. Thank you so much for bringing the outside of Toastmasters leadership uh, experience and uh, also the leadership experience in Toastmasters. It's more like a empathy and also uh, respect each other's individual individual personalities. Absolutely. Is outside or inside of Toastmasters. Right, right. Uh, the, the whole thing hinges on respect. That's a pivotal word. That's, that's a great uh, common denominator. If, yes. If you don't have respect for the people you're working with, and, and trying to relate to, you know, there's, there's not much else going to be accomplished. Yeah. From your perspective, since learning maybe is not as much as uh, some young people, maybe watching people grow and uh, progress maybe will satisfy you in some way, right? Oh, yeah. It I, I've been in the club 11 years, this same yeah. club, and yeah. I'm not giving as many speeches today as I maybe I did when I first started out, but mm -hmm. it's still exciting to me to see people join the club and uh, talk about what their aspirations are, and then watch them fulfill them, watch them grow, watch them try things. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it's exciting. I think it's rewarding. And uh, I'm, I'm there 11 years. I'm not the oldest member of the club. Uh, there's, we have members in our club that have over 20 years with the, in Toastmasters. And so, you know, it's, it's got to be the same for them, too. Yes. After the number years with Toastmasters, what surprised you the most? I'll tell you, the, the thing that surprised me the most uh, of uh, my experience has been the networking opportunities. The, the various members of our club, you, you're going to run into people who's a member of a chamber of commerce over here or a member of an organization over there. And, and inevitably, opportunities come up. And if you're interested in speaking opportunities outside of the club, you you just keep your ears open yeah. it's been amazing and I, i'm kind of like the poster child for our club as far as catching up on these things or taking advantage of them in, in my 11 years i've done a, a a webinar for rasmussen college that was broadcast at 26 all 26 of their campuses wow um, i've spoken for the last six years in a row at the regional meeting for the Mensa organization at their Chicago regional uh, convention in uh, October. Uh, for the last four years, I've been the co MC for the Bolingbrook Pathways Parade that's broadcast on Bolingbrook Community Television. So I'm, yeah. I'm a co MC on, on TV. Uh, wow. You have become been, famous. I've been the, the uh, lunch, featured luncheon speaker for a chamber of commerce, for yeah. a rotary club. I've uh, 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 gotten into being an officiant for 
to conducting weddings and funerals and yeah. memorial services. One of our club members is very, very successful in that area. And uh, she educated me and, and schooled me in how to go about it. And I've conducted weddings and funerals in the, in the past years. Okay. There's a, there's a, a, a speaking competition or debate competition uh, conducted by the Association for Lifetime Communicators in local area high schools. And yeah. they have what they call a communication festival each year. And I've been a judge uh, yeah. at those uh, things for a number of years. Yeah. And then the, the last thing, the most recent thing, which was a surprise, yeah. is I've done a, um, a voiceover recording for wow. the Illinois Aviation Museum for their annual um, um, cavalcade of planes event that's held at the uh, 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 Aviation Museum uh, at Clow Airport in, in uh, Bolingbrook. It's, so these are things, when I joined 11 years ago, I never imagined uh, doing any of these things. And uh, uh, it's just uh, exciting to me to, to yeah. keep finding these opportunities and exploring them. And some of them are even paying jobs, you know, paying yeah. gigs. So uh, it's the networking opportunities are just amazing. And so yeah. if you're into that, if that excites you, if that interests you, uh, Toastmasters is a great source of information and, and network. So. Yeah, wow. Just hearing, <laughs> hearing you listing all the exciting events you've been to, you were participating, your retirement life is so rich and so colorful and so exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure many people are looking forward to retire. <laughs> <laughs> I, retired, masters. <laughs> I retired from corporate life four years ago and yes. I haven't missed it a bit. I, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm, I'm having a great time. So uh, yeah, this is fun. That's really amazing. Yeah, that's great. And it, and so you ask, why do you keep going back? Wow, this is why. I mean, it's, I'm having a yeah. good time. <laughs> yeah, that's that's most important thing is you're having a good time and yeah, you enjoy all this um, events you get into. You you are contributing. Yeah. You are really enjoying the the moment too. Absolutely, that's absolutely. Yeah. That's the yes, priceless uh, experience that many of us are actually are looking forward to, especially when you are retired. You Make your life more meaningful and more fun. I, I would encourage anybody that's uh, interested in expanding their horizons, uh, testing the limits, uh, pushing their comfort zone. Uh, this, is, this is the place to do it. Yeah, that's a great message. In fact, I wanted to comment. You are the seniors the member i have interviewed and i have uh, been talking to <laughs> and you are in inspiring and just look at your life experience looking at your 11 years of postmasters experience and transformation that's really something a tremendously inspiring others well thank you thank that's you. great so do you have anything else would like to share before we close our interview? I, you know, if there's people out there uh, thinking about, oh, should I try Toastmasters? Yeah. You know, is it going to be too intimidating? It, Toastmasters is a self-improvement program. That's yeah, like any other self-improvement programs out there on the market. And you're only going to get out of it what you put into it. So if, if you bother to get yourself up off the couch, if you bother to drive on into the meeting, if you bother to walk on into the room, if you can get the gumption to do that, this, and, and 
overcome your fear to get to that point and you find a good club, the, the club should be the welcoming environment to bring you in and help you see what opportunities there are. You don't have to come in prepared with a speech the first time. Come in and sit in the room and just listen mm -hmm. and feel and, and observe the, not only what transacts there, what, what, what happens, but the support yes. and the encouragement and, the, and you know, the, the evaluations, they're, they're, they're invited, they're, they're welcomed because yes. they're done uh, constructively. They're not done viciously. They're, they're there to help you. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a welcoming and encouraging and nurturing environment. And if uh, someone that's on the fence will just have enough gumption to get to the meeting, walk on in, sit and, and observe, I hope they find the inviting environment that I've found and that has brought me back for 11 years. That, that's amazing. That's a great message. And in fact, with the virtual space now, Sometimes they only need to walk to their office or turn on the camera. Yeah. <laughs> as long as they can speak to that, they can join the Toastmasters. It's there much easier than before, right? Absolutely. Before you have to drive and need to get, uh, to, get to the room. But now yep. you can yep. join a Toastmasters club from the comfortable space in the house. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing such valuable messages with uh, me and with our audience. And uh, what do you share this lifetime valuable ideas and inspirations for us all to, to utilize in our life and also in our learning journey? I, well, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm honored to have been included in your program, and uh, I, I wish all Toastmasters a, a great experience. Thank you so much. The honor is mine. Okay. And that includes our interview, and thank you so much. Have a good night. Bye. Bye-bye. On February 10th, 2022, I was walking into a Toastmaster meeting and it, we were meeting at a room in a, in a library and I collapsed in the lobby of the library and I passed out, I blacked out. And the receptionist called paramedics, they came and revived me and took me to an emergency room Oh. And I was told that I had had a heart block. Now, what that is, it's, it's not uh, arteries blocked or something. It's an electronic problem where you're, the top of your heart doesn't speak to, isn't connected to the bottom of the heart. Oh. And that night, I coded. My heart stopped twice. Oh. And they, can, they performed CPR on me twice to revive me. And then the next day I was, uh, I had surgery to install a pacemaker, which okay. keeps your heart at a regular rate. So you, you mentioned that you never know what's gonna happen. You don't know what your future holds. Yes. Let me tell you, on February 10th, I did not know that I was gonna die twice mm -hmm. that night. And I will tell you, it, it puts a whole new perspective on what you, how you look at life and how you look at opportunities. And, you know, this uh, thing about procrastination, if you want to solve your procrastination, have a heart block and have your heart stop and, uh, and then live to tell the story. And I was lucky enough to have talented people in that emergency room that started my heart back up twice. Wow. 
Wow. And I, I'll tell you what, you, maybe you'll never have a problem with procrastination after that. But there's, there's uh, uh, a lot to be learned from your, your point that you, you never know what the future holds. So you've got to make the most of what we have today. Yeah, that's true. So happy birthday. Thank you and, very much. Yeah, I appreciate enjoy, it. Enjoy every day. Yeah, I, I intend to. And I'm so glad that you have fun at Toastmasters at every meeting and meeting everyone. Yeah, that's very important. I look forward to it. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a great addition to your life. And I hope that's to many of us too. It's yes, definitely it's to, to mine too. Because yeah. on, on every Sunday, I don't really feel like to do anything, but because I have the meeting, I, all of a sudden I feel energetic and I get it to work. And um, after that, I feel like refreshed. Everybody, everybody faces that, oh, gee, do I really want to go? Yeah. But most people, once they went on their way home, they're thinking, they're thinking, what, what's my next speech going to be? What am I going to do? What am I, what can I do? What is, another opportunity to speak? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so, so great uh, talking to you and uh, we had a great conversations. It's my honor to have the opportunity to get to know you more through this interview. Thank you very much, Mishang, and I, uh, the same, I, I am very appreciative of the opportunity to speak with you tonight. 